Hey, everybody. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. We're not going to have a quorum tonight, so um, we can't really uh, okay. approve anything, but we can still discuss a, a decent amount of topics. All right. Great. All right. So welcome to the Town of Fairfield Shellfish Commission meeting, August 14, 2024. Um, we don't have a quorum, but present are Lizette Enhofer, Bruce Kiefner, John Short, and Tim Bishop on the line, conservation. So uh, we can't really approve these meeting minutes that'll have to get pushed to the next meeting. So the meeting minutes of July 10th, 2024, um, I guess those will have to be approved at our next meeting. Yeah, no, they're pending. Okay. Pending. All right, so bills and communications. Go to clam relay and planting. Um, I went out and did a, with the shellfish harvester and did a clam relay on, let's see, the 22nd minus 14 gives me uh, the 6th. The beginning of uh, the beginning of August. Okay. No, sorry. Hold on. It's in July, and we're still close. Uh, yeah, three weeks ago we did a, a relay. It would have opened up if we had the rain. Yeah, it would have that opened Monday. up. Monday. Right. So um, we put That's in Monday about. The yes. That's Monday the fifth. We uh, collected about. I don't know, 80, 90 bushels of clams and planted them at Sasco. We got a really nice spread. We were able to get the boat in real close. Um, the tide was high that day. Um, it was a good mix, like 25%, uh, little necks, then top necks, cherry stones. And we did have a decent amount of cohox in there. So people are going to find some big clams coming up. Um, it would, I don't know, can't really approve it, but um, it'd be nice if we get some more clams in there. So, but I guess we have enough in there for the clinic. I don't know if we'd have to do a market buy beforehand. Um, the clinic is the 20th. 14th. 14th. We'll have a meeting that Wednesday before. Can we do a... Oh, we have a meeting that Wednesday before? Because we, we got to be cl okay. closed after... Yeah, two days before, a day before. Can we... Oh, it's market our, buy. You don't have yeah, to. market buy. We don't have to. All right, so we'll talk about it at the next meeting if we want to get some more clamps. Uh, water and habitat quality. What is that? You got anything? Oh, uh, Right. Hold on. Um, so in July, we were closed for 19 days. We were open for 12. There were two closures. We're having over 1.5 inches of rain. 13th, and then again on the 18th, so we stayed closed. Right. Um, and in July, we had. Seven inches of rain, 7.3 inches of rain. <laughs> In a row, right? So we are due to open tomorrow at sunset. Um, you get that email, Tim? I did. I uh, tried our new system that I'll explain later, but um, I did already update it for tomorrow since no one's going out there in the dark. Right. Um, Will one of the guys flip the sign or? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have Tom do it in the morning. Okay, thanks. Yeah, we'll Friday go... morning. So it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna be. Hmm? Sun, sunset, so this would be, which is tomorrow. tomorrow. Sunrise, 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 sorry, sunrise. sorry. Sunrise. It's sunrise tomorrow. Yeah, sunrise, sunrise tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Say sunset. You said sunset. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Eight fifteen sunrise. Uh, we'll go over the sign in the little subtitle. It says MOU. Yeah, that's fine. Under MOU is fine. Yeah. 
Uh, permits and access. Uh, okay. For permits, we have, uh, for residents, we have 168 and senior 113 and non-resident 15 for a total of 296. Uh, we're approximately 300 there. Uh, last year we had 370, so we're still behind. Yeah, I think. Um... And ho hopefully by the clam clinic, we might sell a few more. Uh, the revenue from those permit sales is $5,090. Yeah, maybe we could sell a few more at the uh, clinic and um, I'll send something over to Sean and he can um, put a post out about the relay and how many clams are in there. T Tim, have you gotten any uh, online inquiries for permits following uh, for selectman's notice? Um, the flow, I would say, is pretty steady. I didn't see a significant spike. Okay. I we wonder did. if we can post that to our... Oh, I don't know. Onto our Facebook. Let's talk about that in communications. Okay. All right, Southport Beach reopening. Um, I'll report on it. So myself, Tim Bishop, and Sans Clary, um, health director. What is what is his title? Director of health. Director of health. Um, met yeah. and talked about uh, what can be done to um, possibly open Southport Beach, and uh, we discussed it for a little while, and then we sent an email to Alyssa at DABA, and the email she wrote back to us. Um, wasn't too great. So um, what we can do is start trying to locate sources of the pollution. And um, if we can rectify some problems, um, the Department of Agriculture may become uh, more keen to uh, opening that beach. But until then, or that bed, until we come up with some kind of uh, I don't even know if we have to fix something. What, what do you have to say about that, Tim? Yeah, I think um, I think we got to go through it. And um, at least the answer wasn't no, but I think there is a lot of work ahead to get you know things where they need to be it's satisfy the state. But, but Tim, that the. Uh report that you got from deep that confirmed that the that the problem was originating on the mill river they were going to follow up as to seeing how they could incorporate that that into their modeling i believe and previously i think uh we talked you uh with sands in insofar as how we could identify where that might be, in other words, how a, a testing method might be outlined so that we could determine where the problem lay. And do, do we go to Duck Farm Road and test the water there? And then do we go uh, further south and sort of try to get a general area? And, or, or how do we proceed? But there must be, if the source is believed to be the Connecticut River, how do we we've done some preliminary testing on outfalls below the tide mill, but I don't think it's obviously coming from further upstream, I believe. What would you suggest? Yeah. How do, where do we go from here? Yeah, I think we have to look, um, I, I have to re, re, uh, re look at that report and then uh, circle back with, uh, the state's email and talk to Sands again and come up with a plan, not only for protocol and location sampling, but also a lab analysis. Um, Sands was looking into that as well um, to kind of isolate um, the different types of coliform uh, and, and, and host, host organism. Uh, 
um, to specify, but I agree. I think um, the, the the protocol would have to isolate it by location, um, where are the hot spots, and then slowly close the gaps upstream and downstream, and and try and locate that, given the same the conditions at the same time, of you know same sampling period, um, to mimic uh, and and rule out potential uh, outside influence. Yeah, because this, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is a concern to the health department as much as it is to us at Southport Beach and shell fishing. I mean, we don't, we, we don't want coliform coming down the, the Mill River. <laughs> and presumably it's a septic of some sort somewhere or more. Well, the problem okay. is, is the testing we did, the DNA, there's some human there, but you know, there could be a lot of this coliform could be from geese, it could be from deer, it could be from dogs. Um, we just did a basic test of a few different things and, uh, you know, yeah, it's we, geese we and on yeah. humans. So um, if it's geese or something like that, we may have a real hard time. The other thing is, is that uh, Alyssa mentioned that the two septics on the actual beach there, they're leery of. So there's no you know, um, no data on them having any leakage or anything like that, but it's just there are two systems right there. Um, well, the, the, the system at the sea lodge, I can tell you, there is no system. The sea lodge has a holding tank that is underneath the roadway because it was constructed a long, long time ago. And so they have that regularly pumped out, but there is nothing that is seaward. Everything goes, they would never be able to replace what they have now because it's in the roadway, but that's what they have there. What the town has in those uh, public restrooms down closer to the bridge, I don't know specifically how they are plumbed, but uh, I don't know. Tim, you, you'd probably know, be able to find out better from Parks and Rec as to how that's plumbed, but I can't imagine that that's necessarily a problem, but potentially. Oh, I'm gonna say that we have um, probably in the years of work before that beach, before that clamming bed gets open. So I'm gonna move it along because I wanna to get to the clam clinic. But uh, oyster bed development, um, we planted all the shell. We reported that at the last meeting. We, we pulled our file. So I think that's it. And always about development. Um, communications. Uh, unfortunately, we missed the Fairfield Parks and Rec deadline. So we're not able to get in that as we had hoped. We, I spoke to them, but we, had, we were way past yeah. the deadline. We so we'll. It. We'll have to stay on top of this, make sure we get in the spring, spring. next year. Okay. Um, so we'll have to get some word out about the uh, clam clinic and that, the relay we just did. Uh, I'll get in touch with Sean and talk to him about it. Um, anyone else got anything on communications? No. Um, so uh, the there was a story of the deeper dive came out. Oh, yeah. Got it. Can we link that? I wonder if we can have that linked to our Facebook page. So okay. I know that I know about it. I wanted to share it and there was I couldn't make it a link. Um, but that's not saying very much. Um we could talk to it. Check out, you know. Lisa Claire maybe might be able to uh send us a link link to it. And and I, and I think that we ought to more target specifically the clam clinic uh, we've did, done this in previous administrations and we have uh, pictures that really focus exclusively on the clam clinic that uh would be great to you know highlight and let people know what what's going on and if if bill's going to be sending out a regular letter uh, get that thrown in there he, he's very enthusiastic yeah, so we'll send an invite to Bill. 
Um, and uh, Tim, you gonna come this year? Uh, I'm on the fence. I'm supposed to, and I have some other friends that are interested. Um, my son's hockey schedule just came out, and he does have a game at three yeah. this afternoon. That afternoon, so I'm gonna try and thread the needle. I think because <laughs> you can. Um, we, we yeah, it's a busy time. time. <laughs> I know. I've got one left. It's going, doing sports. Now we're in hockey season. If we do it in June, it's not. <laughs> All right, so um, the season starts next Monday. <laughs> wow. We decided on the clinic we don't use a banner anymore. We'll get some posts out there. Um, all right. You know, we <clears throat> Tim has done some great things about the clinic in the past. We might print some things up and leave them in the library. You know, oh. in both libraries. When the banner Mentioning all that is, I think that we got the times on the banner or on the flyer as one to three i think that the low tide is at 2 30 but i don't think that'll matter too much um no, i think we want people to get there early yeah and then we'll just um oh. the ending time doesn't matter as much yeah the ending but we time really doesn't don't want matter. people heading out into the water much right. later than three so i think that's fine right but is the water going to be too deep at that point An hour before low? What do you think? An hour I, I don't know how big the I time is. Get people there. They can kind of look around by the time they get shovels or there are rakes and stuff like that and head out. I have the tide chart here. Well, I'm pretty sure it was a 230 low tide. But we can keep it one to three. Um, we'll have to figure right, out when we let people do in the one, water. Do 130. Yeah, if everything's already printed out there and out there. Yeah, and everything's one, out there is one to three, so I might as well just leave it, right? Yeah. People got to get parking anyway. So we'll just keep people, we'll just say, you know, in the water is at, what, 145, 2 o'clock or something? No, earlier than that. Let's just, the, All right, they just, can wait out. I mean, there are clams right up to the swim buoy, so. Yeah. Um, all right. Let them go looking. Yeah. I mean, if, when I go down, I usually. Say 130. I mean, I usually head down. Oh, the flyer down. says 130? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we're, we're fine. So we can hold up. Yeah, I was going to say, I usually go like an hour before low, low so. All right. We're on communication. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, insofar as the clam clinic, what are we doing for? We're going to do chowder. So we have a. We'll get to oh, the clinic. Okay. In a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, upwellers. So the upwellers have been running for a month. Um, I didn't put any oysters in them, but I was just doing a test on it, and the pump ran the whole time. Um, twice it stopped. One time the hose came out of the water and that shuts it off. And another time it, the uh, check valve, the brand new check valve has a screw in it to hold the uh, spring in place and everything stainless steel except for this very small screw that totally disappeared. So I got another check valve. I covered the screw with uh, epoxy and then put it back together and started back up. So this weekend I'm away, but I'm thinking next week we'll throw some of the oysters in and whatever's left, we'll just plant over in um, Sasko Creek. Okay. All right, we'll go through this. Reports from the Conservation Department. Shellfish fund balance, 30650 and 49 cents as of July 30, 31st, 2024. Shellfish permits, as Lizette said, two, or Bruce said, 296 of July 31st, 2024. Our closure period as of July 31st, 2024 was open 106 days and closed 107. Almost 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> our, our threshold went up on the, uh, the rain. Yeah, no. <laughs> so did the rain. decided to rain <laughs> that extra half inch every time. Um, selfish budget status, no, con no discussion. 
old business, updating the shellfish MOU. So we're updating the shellfish MOU and Tim wanted to come up with a better solution to the four different ways we show that the beds are closed. And um, a couple of days ago, sent out an email about that sign. You want to talk about it, Tim? Yeah, is it uh, is it on the table? It's um, right uh, here. Yeah. Let's see. So, oh, so, I like that. I don't know how to? Perfect. Oh, there's the sign. So I ha I had two of those made, um, similar to what Anthony uh, Parks and Rec does with status of the baseball and softball fields, uh, with the QR code. The QR code um, links to. Uh, my department homepage, uh, Shellfish Commission homepage, um, and uh, uh, I think <clears throat> my intent was I keep I get a lot of complaints um, in the fact that uh, the sign at the at the booth says open and the phone line says closed. People don't know what the right answer is. I get a lot of angry people. So um, what I would like to do or propose to do is to eliminate the phone line um, and only use the internet either via people know to go to the home page uh, or physically check um, uh, th this and uh, this sign that you have in front of you um, at various locations at the beach um, so I would remove the flip sign and eliminate John or my staff wasting well I shouldn't say wasting spending time to go down there uh, during business hours, off business hours, weekends, um, to flip that sign. This would be um, installed on the booth. Uh, and then um, with Parks and Rec's permission, there's other signs um, in the sand for parking or handicap or whatever near the kiosk. Uh, and install additional signs there as well. Um, and then promote it via different methods to say, uh, phone line's gone, flip sign's gone, either check the homepage from your cell phone, check it from you know, you know, your laptop, or if you're at the beach, um, scan a QR code and check it that way. And I think it's gonna eliminate a lot of things and that way I have the ability like I did when I got home tonight. And so this is email for reopening that it took me about 35 seconds to update the status. Um, and if I'm not around uh, the commission or the chair or whoever decides um, I had the webmaster and IT create a shellfish login and password that that person can do it and him or her and I can communicate with, hey, I'm not around, can you change it kind of thing. So if it's a weekend, and nighttime, whatever, I'm willing to take the lead. And if I can't, then I would um, ask for backup. And I have, um, let me see, I could share. Um, let me share my screen here. Can you see that screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you come to my pay homepage, I have it. Now here, current open closure status of recreational shellfish, yeah. shellfish beds, like that. And it will show that easy to understand graphic and I changed the <laughs> Wow. Um, now, will this link go directly to that page? Not, then, yes. So this um, link will take them directly to that. Well, they will see either the open or the closed clam. Or are they yes, gonna have to go searching around right. your page? Nope. Uh, if if they if you scan that QR code, I, you could anyone could do scan it from it. the phone right now. Um, so it's also on your on the commission page here or shellfish bed status here. Yeah. So this makes a lot of sense. No one has to flip that sign, and that sign is hard to see to begin with. And then um, we're covered with the the web page. It's perfect. So you can check from home, or you can check when you're at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's a, a fabulous idea. Could we, on our shellfish, shellfish permit tags that we're printing, could we print, start printing the QR code on that and also put the web address so that if people didn't have 
That's genius. Um, I could I could find out from do that for next year. Um, um, Parks and Rec. If I insert a image on the back, um, that would be if it's possible. Then yes, I, I would start doing that so they could scan in their actual permit and go to the link or or they could right right and they have no excuse for like saying they didn't know like I think that I think that would be that's a good idea Bruce the best if we could do that for 2025 would be fantastic. All right, so we'll talk about it um, at the end of the year, but yeah, yeah that's it, it, a good it, idea. And this this is gonna work out so well because- like, I would love to know. see one of these, the sign. So when people are by that shower, a little shower area, and they're like, like right there where they're gonna walk down to go down to the beach. You know what else is good about this is that people just will scan that thing and then they'll come to our webpage and maybe they'll buy a permit. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And similarly, as you know, I have um, I have a QR code in the kiosk to purchase, right. um, which is obviously a different QR code than this one. Um, but um, I figure here, shellfish status uh, on this tab or my department page is, you know, three different locations is is pretty, um, pretty pretty much uh, it's pretty well spread out there. <laughs> so yeah, I think. That's good. This is great. So, um, I know about it. Um, I did start. I have redlined um, and, and updated this language in the MLU. Uh, my intent is to get this to um, back to them or, or and to you and to the commission um, tomorrow or oh, at least before the weekend. All right. Um, so, my initial email explaining this to um, Alyssa, I got. John saw uh, positive feedback saying this is a great idea. So um, already that this the, and the state was happy that uh, we were getting kind of into the right century and um, being efficient. So uh, it's more transparent. There's less confusion. There's less effort, effort and labor involved. Um, and it just makes way more sense because the, the angry people calling with confusion are is is a lot so and it takes um, another key off that's, my key uh, that's I stand. um on the subject of signs um <laughs> it's down at southport beach all the uh yellow signs shell fishing prohibited are all just worn away or um just broken up so we probably need a few more of those yellow signs or any kind of shell fishing prohibited signs at southport beach all right, so that's it for the MOU. That will come off the uh, agenda for next month. Uh, discussion work with core. They're not here. New business. All right, so discussion on new potential alternate commissioners. Um, I talked to um, the town lawyer and he talked to the RTM and they sent over, they're working on getting the paperwork drawn up to start getting this done. So I have an email. Um, Whether we're going to get this approved or request for sponsors so we can review the draft and finalize. So they're working up a draft, and I guess they have to get a couple people to push it forward, and then they'll finalize, and then we can. So the commission is not a charter commission; we're just under the town code. Um, so this should just sort of go through and we'll have to look for a couple more commissioners. Um, and having an alternate would have worked out tonight. <laughs> so, all right. So that's being handled. Shell donation. Um, Tim Bishop put together a real nice thank you letter to send to the Blooms for um, donating that shell to us. Uh, thanks, Tim. Oh, 
new signage was on here. So we already discussed that. Um, somehow the clam clinic's not on here, but we can discuss it. So we're going to do chowder again, right, Bruce? Yes. I'll do, you'll do New England, I'll do Manhattan. Right. Okay. Are you going to be able to make it, Was that? Um, that is. So then, Tim, do you think mm -hmm. we need a police officer for the afternoon or? I, I think it's probably a good idea. Um, I could, I could coordinate that with the people. Coordinate PD. that? Okay. What uh, times are we thinking? Like one, one to three? Yeah, one so to three is probably it. good. Yeah, that okay. would be the busiest time. Yeah, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, my daughter's birthday is in the middle of the week. So I don't know if we're going up to her college to see her. Okay. That mm -hmm. Sunday or the following Sunday, and I still have to find out. I haven't even looked at when the, the uh, next Saturday, right? <laughs> visits are, parent visits are. Okay. Um, I think Saturday or is it Sunday? Saturday. The 14th? Yeah. So we have to, it's different than we've done before because when we get there, the beach is empty, the parking lot's empty. Um, so I don't know if we have to, if we should possibly set up the tent in the morning when there's not a lot of people there, our tents and, you know, everything. And then... Um, I don't know if we can, we can't really mark off any spaces or anything like that, right? Just, or any part of the beach, you think, can we, Tim? Not really, but I don't think putting the tent there early is a bad idea. All right, so we'll do the tent early. I mean, maybe if we shift it to the left, instead of being like smack dab in the middle. Right. Maybe shift it to the left, so we're kind of leaving that middle to the right for people who are just beachgoers. Leave all the way down, okay. And, and I think by setting the tent up, it's going to create interest. People are going to say, oh, you know, if we have one tent with the rakes and all of that other business, and we have another it. tent with the chowder, and people get, oh. We have the bullhorn. We're going to have, hopefully, are we going to have music, Lizette? Or? I don't know. You didn't tell me to reach out to her. Um, so at the last meeting, Sean said, like, the bands he was thinking of were, had fallen through or... You think you could reach out to her? I absolutely can. All right. Well, you know, one of the things was that his the bands that he talked about needed power. Right. So that we that had to have a generator. Uh, you know, he's talking about a different vibe. Right. Quite frankly, the, to me, the steel band. I think that moving we, it... Being in the afternoon with the steel drum band is the actual vibe. Like yeah. the morning with the band is less of the vibe than the afternoon with the. So if you get in touch with them and um, just uh, get a price so we can get it together at the next meeting. I think what did we pay her before? I think we paid her four fifty. Four fifty for three people. Yeah. Maybe she has five hundred. I don't think that's outrageous. They may go up. You never know. Right. Gas yeah. prices, things like that. So we can't approve anything right now so we'll just keep it on the list all right um so should i discuss with tom about the friday before like meeting him so we can get the ice and all that or yeah i think that's fine all right yeah, and um or will there be any conservation staff doing anything that afternoon or working yeah thank that, that could happen. All right. I think um, in the past we've had Tom and another guy there. Sometimes Ed was there. but um, And then I don't know if Joanne is going to come and do the the table. Like, I don't even know if we need to do that anymore with the permits. If we set up a table with the QR codes and everything, right? Yeah, I, th I think that would be fine. Yeah. All right. And then... I'll reach out to Mill River Wetland to see if they want to have a, a tent, maybe a table. Um, what else do we want to do? So and then we'll discuss, we'll get everything together for, by the next meeting and go for it. We'll go for it. We know what to do, right? I'll, we'll get the grill, I'll bring propane. Um, 
So normally we fill up the coolers with ice, fill it totally up, and then the next morning go there early and fill the second cooler. Uh, I'll count how many bags we have. And if we don't have enough, we'll get some more bags for the clams. When do we load up the, the rakes and all that stuff on the trailer? So we've always done it on right. Friday afternoon. So it'll probably be when so we have the small trailer now, which is easier to deal with. So if conservation is going to, if anyone's working that can bring the trailer down, if not, we'll haul it down ourselves, but we can get into the locker and we can get all the rakes and everything. It's just that it used to be that big yellow trailer was a different, you know, thing. So um, we probably should load them up Friday afternoon unless we want to do it Saturday morning, but it makes it a long day, you know? Yeah. It's easier just to have it ready to. Right. So we'll put the tent on the trailer or in one of the back, one of the pickups, get all the rakes, all our gear and everything, any signage we have, um, tables, all that. All right. The, now, <clears throat> if there are questions on the weather, what's it's a go, no go. There's no, it depends on how hard it's raining. <laughs> We've done it in the rain we before. We have no rain date. We have no rain date. No. Do we? Um, I thought that. Sunday? You, yeah, Sunday was our possible rain date. Let's see what happens. Yeah, because if it, if it rains and shuts down the bed, so you're talking two weeks out, right. starts getting colder. Yeah, it's dumb. It's done. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's somebody not gonna be, I think it's something not gonna be the same as it's been in the past because you're gonna have so many of those families that you now Saturday afternoon. So just let's sports. hope the beds are open. So if the beds are and open, it's rain and or go shine. From there. Yeah. All right. All right. Um prizes. We normally do we normally get our hands on some gift cards. Um I'll go ask a few people if uh they'd be willing to donate. Um the restaurant that always gave me the gift cards they closed so um i'll see if i could come up with something else um well, Cindy, nordic fish has given things nordic fish yeah and uh Bryak has done, done things okay and then cindy said do you think room will give us anything Chris? yeah they did a hundred dollars last year for um the oyster shack the oyster shack or they yeah could they could do doesn't have to be a hundred. They can do fifty, Anything. fifties. Cindy 50s, says. Yeah. Cindy says to sign her up for um, raffle prizes. So I think in our bin we should have all the clamshells, all that kind of stuff. Over the next few weeks, we'll go through, make sure we have everything, make sure everything's good for the next meeting, approve what we need to approve, decide if we want any more clams, and uh, that's it something else i had one thing under uh informational when you're ready go ahead uh, i sat with um one of some of the i'll call her leadership at saint thomas aquinas church um coming to me for for um service environmental service related projects or service time um like picking up litter or whatnot uh uh, I mentioned the commission and they have a um, strong interest in, uh, you know, younger kids and, and families in the parish that would like to participate in some of the events that Shellfish Commission does. So we, um, with that connection, could be um, a, a source of assistance. Right. And when, for, uh, when are they looking collector. for their service? Anytime or? Anytime, yeah, that's... Um, they're interested in coming to the clinic, so uh, um, I'll make I could make that connection, and and uh, I did pass them the agenda for tonight. Um, it doesn't look like anyone else is on the line, but um, was that with Janet Rabel? Is that the is that the school or is that the CCD program or the, for the kids getting uh, confirmed? Do you know? No, uh, they just, I I don't know. They had some changes over the there. Church. Um, let me see if I, I can't remember her name. Let me see if I have it written down. Uh, Kathleen Curran. Okay, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, 
So just wanted to mention that, that uh, maybe if there's a need, once we establish that connection, if the commission's interested. Yeah, we would, we would probably be interested. Um, we'd definitely be interested. Um, so that reminded me for the clinic, we need to put out an email to volunteers that we've had in the past or anyone that we think wants to volunteer and post on Facebook that we're looking for volunteers. I know that Bob Billick's interested. I know there's a few other people, so, um, we're probably going to need the help. So, uh, We'll put the call out for volunteers. Um, what else we got? The Pequot Yacht Club paperwork was submitted. Um, the only comment we put on there was that, uh, did we even put a comment of the bottom be restored to um, condition before work done or? I don't, uh, I don't remember if that yeah. Was in the paperwork or not? Yeah, that's all. This is only preliminary. There's plenty it's, of time. Um, it's fine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we have plenty of culture. If we want to throw some culture along the wall to cover up the construction parts, we can. Um, shoot, I got something else. What was it? So this is informational, and it really has nothing to do with the town or anything. But um, my son goes to Coastal Carolina and. This semester, he's taking a marine, marine sciences course, and Coastal Carolina helps out with um, in a little river in North Myrtle Beach, and my father-in-law lives down there, and they've had all this shell. They've gotten all this shell from uh, a bunch of restaurants and had it sitting around, and now they're bagging it up in those mesh bags like we do, and they're laying it down in the little river because they're trying to clean up the area, get some more oysters growing. And open to harvest, so he's got a good background in uh, he's taking his knowledge shell. With him. <laughs> Maybe he'll get involved with the shell down there, but yeah, he knows a lot about it. Um, All right, well, as far as like buying for the relay, or not the relay, the, the purchase for the clinic, did Amy at some point in time wasn't there a fund that is at your discretion as the chairman, or can we do something? Prior to that, where we can vote on it to approve funds to purchase? To purchase what? Uh, clams what to put out. So if we meet on Wednesday and the clinic is on Saturday. We don't have time. And get them in on Thursday, Friday. But to do that, don't we have to? I mean, we know everyone's going to be able to put out the word to the. People sell the market clams and say, listen, we might be interested in a thousand dollars worth of clams on this day. Give me a give me a quote and I'll bring it to the meeting. And if we vote on it and say, OK, then the next day, hopefully if everything works out. You know, we can get the clams in the water okay. and they'll be dug in by Saturday. Uh, Is there any other way for us to vote on that? Can, we, can we do an e-vote? In other words, can, can we send out a um we ought to check and see whether or not no, we we'd can... have to have like a special meeting i think so yeah vote. you couldn't you couldn't vote on anything without a quorum but you could do a special meet publicly notice a special meeting yeah but that, prior yeah, that that's a so we got a decent amount of clams out there we put a lot of clams up we've been closed there was one clamor out there that got a good half bushel but uh <laughs> So we have a lot of clams. We have a month. People are going to hit it pretty hard. As you know, we're probably going to need some clams. I mean, if we I can get that, someone that you work with before that to purchase from, that's okay with the fact that we're not going to get that approval until Wednesday night. See if the, I can see if just, they go to market. So when we get clams from like someone who sells to market, all those clams go to market. So they just save a chunk for, for people that buy. You okay. know, so. It's not like, you know, they'll just pull that to the side. And if we didn't take it, it just goes. goes right okay. so, I think we should plan on that. All right. So I'll talk to them. About that. Um, no public. Anything the only, else? The only other thing is, uh, Tim, I, I'm sure you saw it. Uh, all of us have received a copy. Deep has sent out a draft application for in Southport Harbor dredging. And 
the Army Corps of Engineers was there today, along with surveyors from the engineering department and the project manager, a botanist. They're actually having to map out all the plants that are there and see what the impact is. Yep. And Scott from engineering is going to be there to, tomorrow to get a survey map. They spent three or four hours tagging plants. And uh, it's looking fairly positive that they'll do it this year. It's the Army Corps is planning to move ahead, but Deep has to give it the OK. And there's a 30 day comment period, which hasn't commenced yet. So if it happens, for instance, on the 20th, then all of a sudden, the, you know, it's the 20th of September and uh, it gets to be very, very, very difficult in terms of equipment coordination. It's not the Curatuck, it's the sister ship to the Curatuck. Uh, the captain of the, Kur of, of the sister ship wants to know what's going to be where, because this is a very large vessel that's very hard to move. And you can't just say, oh, I'd like it there next week. So it's hopefully it'll happen this year, but the problem is getting much, much more severe. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it, it looks like it's going to happen. But, well, you know, yeah, but if there's a comment period, but but but, but if so anyway, so it, it's it's tricky because because deep can stop the whole thing. No. Um, and they have to do they can only dump the uh, the dredge materials in a certain time frame, something like September to something else. So, well, yeah, so they've, they've done a lot of work. But, and then then the, the other question is the width of the dredging and they look at opting asking for 100 feet and uh, deep could potentially push it down to 75. Yeah. Um, so as it pertains to us is, you know, we have the, so the shellfish boats are still out there. Um, some of them are in pretty close today. So I called Dave Carey and he said he extended the permit out for them. So I said, okay, that's fine. But um, really, you know, the dredging, it doesn't affect us that much other than there are some clams and oysters possibly in the harbor there. So I talked to Dave and um, I said before, if there's a chance before the dredging starts to get a boat in there, a smaller boat and try to get as much as they can out of there. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's all, it's pretty much all sand. It's all sand, yeah. That's... That, that's what they're removing. They're removing right. so, 20,000 cubic yards of sand. They're not, so there's no mud. They're going to dump all this sand and supposedly it's going to pile up and then spread out over time. So that's why they're given such a big area to harvest from. Um, yeah. yeah. On to the, back to the musician. Mm -hmm. So she got back to me. Um, she said, yes, yeah, she can do it. She said 450 again. She'll get some musicians together. Sure. Didn't we approve $1,000? Already, we did approve a thousand dollars, so 450 is fine, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, tell her to have a hard copy receipt with her that she can sign because the town won't accept anything handwritten. And we'll you'll get in touch with her and give her all the times and all that kind of stuff, right? All right, um, that was a good discussion, so I guess we're gonna end the meeting. Anything else, Tim? Um, Tom asked me, uh, everyone okay to shuffle um, the uncured shell behind the workshop? That yeah. Stir that by a little bit? Yeah. yeah. And then, um, I haven't been down there. Have you taken a look at the shell we have now? Yeah, it's a, it's nice. Is it it's filling up that whole whole container? Or is there still some space in there? Uh, when I saw it, I recall it was pretty full. Pretty full. All right. We'll have to figure it that's out. Good. All right. Good. All right. That's it for now. Um, Thank you, Tim. Great idea on the on the QR code. Yes. That's, yeah. Love that's that. Really great. Love Thank that. you. I'll, uh, 
uh, I, I mean, for the clinic. So, and Lizette tried it, and it went right to the the clam. So it did. Good. All right. Have, have a good night. <laughs>